Everybody nowadays seems to be using cursor as their main editor. It's like VS Code with LLM support. You have an AI in your editor, you have an agent that can use tools, it can edit code, it can search for files, it can incorporate multiple files into its context. And to be honest, I myself converted to I have to use cursor now because it's just stupid not to for many of my use cases. However, many of you guys and I understand that fully don't want to switch to anything other than NeoVim. You want to stay with NeoVim or at least for some projects, you want to keep using NeoVim maybe because cursor isn't that powerful or that necessary in that context. But you still want to have like a similar sort of tool set where you can ask the AI questions in the editor where it can add pieces of code where you can add multiple files as, as context. And for this, there is a plugin called Avante for NeoVim. And this is basically like turning NeoVim into cursor. So this is what we're going to take a look at in this video today. Let us get right into it. All right, so let us get started right away. We have the Avante.nvim repository here on GitHub. You can see here, use your NeoVim like using cursor AI IDE. And basically, when you scroll down here, you can see some screenshots, some videos showing how Avante works, showcasing a couple of the features. And important down here, you can see the installation instructions. And we have here multiple plugin managers that are supported. We have lazy.nvim, which we're going to use in this video today. We have uh, Vimplug, Packer, and so on. Now, what's important for this video is I'm going to assume if you're watching this and you're interested in that, you're either just watching it for entertainment or you actually already use NeoVim and have your setup ready. So you don't need me to teach you how to set up NeoVim from scratch. If you need that, I have an outdated video on uh, the config using Vim script. However, I'm going to at some point, hopefully in the future, release a tutorial on my current config, which is Lua based, but it's going to take some time because I want to do some more uh, customization when it comes to the setup. If you want to have my config, if you just want to copy paste it and use it, you can go to my GitHub repository there I have a config files, uh, or actually to my GitHub account there I have a config files repository. And there you can find uh, among other things also my NeoVim config. But what you need to do now is you just need to use your plugin manager, hopefully supported here, and you just need to copy paste this configuration. We're going to keep it at the default. I'm not going to customize anything here. So just copy it. And then in my case, I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm going to go to my dot config directory. I'm going to go to the NVIM directory. And in here now I have this in it Lua, which is my just my basic configuration in it Lua, then Lua, then I have my config here with colors, key maps, uh, lazy and options. And then I have my plugins directory. And in here, what you want to do if you're also using uh, lazy, probably you have your own structure, your own setup. So you don't need to listen to me for the installation. But in my case, here, I just create a file avante.lua. And I copy paste everything into this file. And that's it. The next time I restart NeoVim, it basically has this plugin installed, and it's ready to use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually give it a try. I'm going to go to my current directory. And hopefully I don't have stuff here. I do have stuff here from my last video. So let me just briefly remove everything from here. All right, so now we have an empty directory. And one thing that's important is if you want to use Avante with large language models from OpenAI or Anthropic, these are the two that are supported by default. I think there's also some Olama configuration that you can use. You can basically just go to the GitHub repository and uh, to use it, I think here you have some instructions. There you go. You need to have the OpenAI API key exported. You need to have the Anthropic API key exported. Uh, you can also use Azure or Bedrock. And I think that there is some section down here about uh, Olama. So here you can also specify your Olama uh, models if you want to. We're just going to keep it simple and use the GPT uh, for O model, so quite simple, just a basic open AI model. And if you want to do that, you need to export as I showed you right now, uh, the API key. So you need to say export open AI underscore API underscore key is equal to your API key, you need to do that. And if you want to persist that, so if you want to have this uh, long term, not just for this terminal session, you need to do that in your uh, config file for the shell. So either in your bash RC or Z shell RC, uh, Z S H R C. I'm not sure uh, how the file is called if you pronounce it correctly, you just have to set this environment variable permanently in your config. So I'm going to briefly set it for this terminal session. And then we're going to cut back to the recording.
All right, so I just exported the API key, which means that if we open up now a new Python file, let's call it main.py, I can use Avante in this file or also in other files, and it uses the OpenAI API key. Now in the configuration, for those of you who didn't see that, if I open up my configuration here, um, and I go to my plugins and I go to Avante, you can see which model is being used here is GPT 4.0, you can change that. Uh, but that's a default option. So you have to change it here in the configuration, not uh, while using it in, in your editing or while you're editing the file, you need to do it in the configuration here. So we're using 4.0 right now. And let's go ahead and try something very simple, I can use now the leader. So in my case, that's the space bar leader AA to open up this Avante, maybe I should move my camera window here, to the left. Um, maybe let's move it completely to the bottom left, there you go. Uh, but you can see now this Avante uh, chat window. So I can say something like implement a basic Fibonacci function. And then I can say control s to submit that. So what happens now is it says implement a basic Fibonacci function, it uses a tool. So it does tool calling, replace in file, and it generates this code now and I can confirm now by pressing y. So I can say y and enter and this is going to then accept this and it's going to um, put this into my file permanently now. So this is the code. And you can also see that if I, for example, select this, you can see I have here the leader AA to ask again, as a context, I give it the function, or I can say AE. So for example, I can say leader AE. And I can say edit the selected block by doing the following, make it recursive, and control S to save it. And in this case, I think I messed something up because I somehow deleted the function. So let me try again. Uh, let's just go to the top again, let's mark all of this AE. And now let's say, make it recursive. And then I can say control S again. So it's going to take that code as context, and it's going to re implement it recursively, that worked. And now I can, for example, go and do leader AA, and I can say is, for example, here is this implementation optimal question mark control S. And now it answers hopefully with no, it's not optimal, you should probably use um, either iterate an iterative approach, or you should use um, I'm not sure if it mentions here, that uh, also using dynamic programming would be an option. So let's go, I need to keep it recursive, though. And then hopefully it says, that I can use some caching here. Memorization, there you go. And now I say, uh, yes, go ahead, because it asked me if I want to apply this um, optimization. So now it uses again, the replace file, I can say yes. And now I can close this again with leader AA. And now you can see here I have this, I mean, it's not caching, it doesn't use like the LRU cache from Python but it still implements like a, a storage. So the space complexity is now uh, worse, let's say, but the runtime complexity is better. So that is a very simple example. Now we can also do that with multiple files. For example, let's delete everything here. Let's open up. Um, let's open this up here. And let's create a new file. Let's call it tested data .csv. I can open it and I can say here leader AA. By the way, we can clear the history, I don't have a key, uh, key bind for that, but we can say colon Avante. Now this is hidden by my camera again, I don't know where to put it, I'm going to put it here. Now. Um, I can say Avante clear, and this is going to clear the history. So now I, if I do leader AA leader AA, you can see there's no history here. So that works with this command, you can of course map it to a key bind. And now I can say something like generate uh, 10 rows of sample data for people. And then it generates hopefully the data here, tool calling replace and file, there you go, I have the examples, yes, go accept it. And now I can go ahead and I can say, um, in this file here, maybe I want to create I don't know if it actually can create new files, maybe that's a cool thing to test. Maybe it has a tool for that, but I actually don't think so. So let's see create a new 
file helpers pi and um, I don't know, implement a function for loading the CSV data and returning it as JSON. Now as a context here, I also want to provide the CSV file. So I can go up here and I can say at so the at key like the mail symbol, and I can add test data .csv as context here. So now it's using both files here as context. And now I can send this I can say control s. And hopefully, can it actually do that? Are you sure you want to create this file? Let's say yes. Oh, it actually okay, it was able to create a file. I'm actually impressed. I didn't think that so now we have this load CSV as JSON, but it is actually quite generic. So it doesn't work specifically for that one file. But I guess that's fine. Um, and now what we want to do here is we want to we want to uh, go to the main file and we want to use this function and print the data. So I can say here, uh, space a a or actually space a a like this. Um, and I can say as context now also include the helpers pi and also include test data CSV. And now I can say, use the helper function, load the data and print it as a dictionary. So I can submit that. And basically, all I'm using here all the time. Uh, there you go, that works. Okay, yes. Perfect. And now I can close this. And I can say Python three main py. And there you go, I have the data here in dictionary or JSON format, of course, again, blocked by my camera. So now we're going to try the top right. But as you can see here, this is quite simple. However, I need to say it's not nearly as capable or convenient as cursor. So it does have the features you can connect your API key, you can use uh, GPT models, you can use anthropic models, you can do some basic stuff like editing code snippets, adding multiple files as context. And I think it's better than nothing. I think it's better than just copy pasting code into LLMs and then copy pasting their changes back into your code. I think that this is a little bit more convenient. But I don't think that if you really enjoy using cursor, I don't think that this is like a solid replacement for cursor. I think it's like a nice tool that you can use with NeoVim. But yeah, so especially I don't know, maybe I just didn't spend any time setting it up. I didn't change the configuration. I just used the default configuration. Uh, but a lot of times stuff is buggy here. So if I open up um, the window here, sometimes if I want to add a file as context here, and it's in a different directory, I get something like file not found or invalid path, I don't know why, then I click on something and there's some uh, error that something didn't work. And it's not really like the rest of my NeoVim config messing this up. It's more like the tool seems kind of clunky at times and doesn't seem like it's a really solid implementation, at least yet. Uh, but I like the idea of having a cursor alternative natively in NeoVim. I really think this is a good idea. I hope they keep developing this. And I want to encourage you guys that are using NeoVim to give it a try to connect your API keys and to see, you know, if you like it, if you can make use of that. Again, I personally, if I'm working on a complex project where I really need to prioritize speed, I'm going to use cursor at least for now. Uh, but this is really a solid alternative for smaller projects, or if I just don't want to use anything except for NeoVim. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're interested in more NeoVim related content, if you're interested in my current setup, showcasing it, showing you how to install it maybe. Uh, as I said, I plan on doing such a video in the future, but currently I'm not quite satisfied with the config. As always, you can get all my config files on GitHub. Uh, but without a video, without instructions, just the config files that you have to copy and paste if you want to use them. But if you're interested in more NeoVim content or more Linux content, let me know in the comment section down below. And besides that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.